Now it could well be that you've come to a part of your training where it's simply not going to plan. Or maybe you've just reached maximum peak performance and you still want to go faster. It's time for plan B, the marginal gain game. Let's look then at five ways on how to make your bike faster. And there is no doubt about it, tyre pressures totally transform the feel and comfort level on your bike. However, you can actually get some speed for free by playing around with that pressure too. Now years ago, we used to all put our tyre pressures up to virtually maximum and hope for the best really, being bounced around from left to right, up and down, with every little bit of bad surface on the road. So adjusting your tyre pressure to suit the road surface as well as your weight can actually make a massive difference. So go ahead and experiment. However, if you're a track rider, then don't. Still stick to the maximum PSI. Yep, that's right. Long, flappy cables are far from ideal if you want to cheat the wind. Now, before you go ahead and start chopping them really, really short, you want to make sure that you can still operate your brakes and your gears and actually still turn your handlebars too. In the case of poor old Ollie Bridgewood's bike here that I borrowed, well, he could actually chop them, I reckon, about two centimetres shorter. And believe it or not, all of these things do add up, especially if you're going for marginal gains. Now, if you've got yourself an electronic group set too, think about joining up the electronic wire with the rear brake cable where it enters the tubing. That way you can save possibly a fraction of a second there too over your ride. Go on, give it a go. Nothing screams slow bike more than a bike looking as though it's entered a bike shop covered in super glue and it's left covered in every single accessory you could imagine. Certainly not if you want a bike that's going to go really, really fast. So perhaps you want to set a PB on your local climb? Well, you're going to need to remove those bottles, aren't you? So leave them at the side of the road until you get that PB, come back, put them on. The same can be said for a humongous saddlebag. Think about what you really actually need to take with you on that bike. This one here, more than up to the job for most people. Silly horn. You don't need one of those on the bike either. Full frame pump, take a mini pump, all of these things. If you get rid of them, you are going to go faster. Less weight on the bike. Something I will never get bored of telling you all about is washing your bike. That's right. A clean bike is going to be a happy bike. And what's a happy bike? A faster bike. But why exactly? Well, for a start, there's going to be less dirt on it. And secondly, all of your gears are going to be working absolutely spot on, helping you ride faster. No more slipping gears or misjumping gears, for instance. Plus, it's going to give you a psychological boost too, because you're going to be happy riding that bike. Yes, I know there has been some research that said that an angry cyclist is faster, but that's only over a short amount of time. So don't worry about that. Go for the clean bike. Now, whether you choose to go high tech ultrasonic chain cleaning or a jet wash over the whole bike, or maybe the old traditional white spirit on the chain, it will make a difference. Go ahead, clean that bike. It will go faster. And don't forget to lube the chain. Now this one is going to put the cat amongst the pigeons and I do expect to get a fair bit of flack from you down there in the comments section but I'm going to put it in anyway because I truly believe this one could have some effect on marginal gain performance. Removing your bearing seals. That's right, these seals, they can in fact increase the drag when that bearing tries to turn, especially if you've got contact seal type bearings where the rubber seal here actually touches the inner ring of that bearing. Now. If you were to do this, it will certainly shorten the lifespan of your bearings considerably because all of the rubbish from the outside world is going to go inside of it. Well, not all of it, but bits of grit and dirt will go inside. The only place where I could recommend it, where I have done it, is if you were going possibly for the hour record on an indoor velodrome because there you have a lot less foreign bodies floating around that could get sucked into those bearings. So there we are, five different marginal gains that you could take on board to make your bike a little bit faster. But as ever, what have you done to your bike to make it a little bit quicker? Let me know down there in the comments section and who knows, maybe your little hack or bodge will make it into the next video. I love to read what you've done. Now remember to like and share this video with your friends, give it a big thumbs up, as well as sharing it with maybe someone who could do with riding a little bit faster. Don't forget too to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for another great video, this time the latest GCN tech show. How about clicking just over there?